You guys had so much fun with last week's video, practicing the 1-4-1 plagal cadence and singing in movable do solfege. So I had no choice but to come back and show you how to do the same thing with the perfect cadence, the 5-1 resolution. If this is something you want to know more about, stick around. In last week's video, we covered the plagal cadence, the one for one cadence. And I took you through a protocol whereby we play it on the piano, and then I show you how to sing the root movement so that you can get the sound quality in your ear. If you happen to miss that, I will link it up above here somewhere um, so you can watch that one to get the maximum benefit of my efforts here. So this week, we're going to look at the perfect cadence. Now remember, a cadence is the close of a musical phrase where a moving chord resolves in some way to a resting chord. The perfect cadence is a dominant cadence where the five chord resolves to the one. And when we think about final, a final chord or a final series of chords at the end of a song, a lot of times what we're really thinking of is that five resolution. And in this case, we're going to turn that dominant chord into a dominant seventh, which is really the strongest of all resolutions. This week, we're going to look at the perfect cadence. Now, remember that the cadence is of the close of a musical phrase, where a moving chord resolves usually in some way to a resting chord. The perfect cadence is a dominant cadence where the five chord resolves to one. And in this case, we're going to play a dominant seventh chord, so a true dominant cadence. So I'm going to put the music right here so you can see it. And I'm going to show you that we were starting with a C triad in root position, and then we're going to a G7 chord that I've put in an inversion, in this case the second inversion, so that it voice leads smoothly. Now you may also notice that there's a note missing here. So I've eliminated the fifth of the chord, which isn't that a mandatory note, it's not the most important note in the chord, so that we can have smooth voice leading and we can also keep the chord kind of easy to play in your hand. All right, so when we're going from C to G7, the bottom note resolves down by a half step. So it moves from a C to a B, it's a half step going down. The middle note, the E, goes up by a half step to the F, and the top note stays the same. All right, now this is how you're going to transpose this in the easiest possible way. Believe me, you'll be glad we did this intervallically. So once again, we're going to start with the C triad. The C goes down to the B, so it goes down by a half step. The middle note goes up by a half step and the top note stays the same. So let's have a look at this on the piano. So we're going to start on a C triad. The bottom note goes down by a half step. The middle note goes up by a half step and the top note stays the same. And there's your G7 chord. I'll play it again. Good. So just like we did last week, we're going to practice this via the circle of fifths going the flat way. So we're going to go C, F, B flat, etc. So we're going to go in F. And here's the C7. And then the F. Very good. And remember the notes move the certain way. Bottom note down by a half step, middle note up by a half step. Top note stays the same. Very good. Now let's do that in the key of E flat. to A flat. Up to D flat. Now let's go to G flat. Now to B. And to E. Excellent. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the left hand playing the root of the chord. And so in this case, we're going C and we're going to go to G. See how we did that? All right. 
And for this one, we're going to go up to the G. straight with that root movement you're gonna sing do sol do all right that's our way in solfege of saying one to five to one and I like to do it in solfege so start with me in solfege do sol do and I'm singing what the bass line is playing right I'm playing the do sol singing it in my own range. So sing in whatever octave is comfortable. Let's go to F now. Do, sol, do. Now to B flat. Do, sol, do. Now to E flat. Do, sol, do. Now to A flat. Do, sol, do. Now to D flat. you could instead substitute one five one that would be a great thing to do and if you really need help drilling the names of the chords in your ear you could actually sing C G7 C right that would be another way you could work on it so now we're gonna give it a little bit of an extra challenge instead of going from the root of the one chord up to the root of the five chord and back down. We're going to sing from the one chord down to the five chord in the bass. So it's going to look like this. And you'll have to sing it too, so this is kind of tricky. <laughs> You're going to go Do, Sol, Do. See how we did that? Do, Sol, Do. Now we'll do it through the circle of fifths. This is a very simple three-step process that's a great way for you to practice this in all of the keys. First thing that you did is you played the 1-5-1 one, one cadence, the perfect cadence in all 12 keys. I played it in the right hand. You could also get some extra bonuses for playing it just in the left hand too until you were able to, to really get it through all of the keys. I went through the circle of fifths going the flat way. You could go by the circle of fifths the other way, up and down by half steps, or just randomly as you see fit. As you're transposing it, you're remembering how the notes move. So how the bottom note goes down by a half step, the middle note goes up by a half step, the top note stays the same. You're going to think about those intervallic relationships as you go along.
Once you're comfortable doing that, we'll add the left hand playing the bass notes, and you're gonna go from one to the up to the five and down to the one, and you'll do that in all the 12 keys. And then you'll do the same thing again, singing down to the five chord instead. This is a really terrific routine if you wanna really solidify some of your piano skills or build piano skills you haven't had before. And it's also a terrific way to build some ear training. By singing the one, five, one progression, what you're doing is you're solidifying it in your ear so that when you hear music, you'll be able to hear that cadence and know what's going on. This is the point of ear training. If you enjoyed my video today, make sure you click like and leave a comment below letting me know how it went. You can also tell me what other videos you'd like me to cover. I release a couple of videos every week here on YouTube. Also make sure you subscribe to my channel and sign up for notifications so that you can be kept in the loop of when new videos come out. Make sure you check out my website, pianoandvoicewithbrenda.com. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Plus, I leave a ton of great free resources down there if you want to check them out. Thank you so much for watching.